This presentation is brought to you by Arizona State University's Julianne Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability and a generous investment by Julianne Wrigley. Environmentalism has not dealt well with cities. I think in part this is because of the history of environmentalism. It was 1970 and President Nixon who created the EPA. And the EPA was given the task of coordinating the administration of a variety of new environmental laws, which had been created largely around disasters. You know, when the Cuyahoga River started burning, we said, oh yeah, uh, we better get a Clean Water Act. <laughs> Things like that, you know, sort of backing into a regime that we now have, but through crisis management. I mentioned 1970 because if you think about it, well, I had just moved to Tempe in 1968. 1968 was the year that Martin Luther King was assassinated. I remember living in Tempe at the time. <coughs> Concordia Drive. <laughs> 1970 was just six years after JFK had been assassinated. It was just five years after we passed the Civil Rights Act. It was four years after we passed the Voting Rights Act. But the leadership of the EPA deliberately disengaged the issues of the cities and urban populations. They made the conscious decision not to deal with cities and urban ecologies. And that early decision to disassociate from cities has left a paradigm around cities that is also unsustainable. Cities are often viewed by environmentalists as the enemy, as sources of waste and pollution, and this leads to demonizing urban areas and their inhabitants who are increasingly disproportionately people of color. The statistics on future urbanization make it very clear this negative mental paradigm is particularly unsustainable. We must embrace urbanization and explore ways in which it can preserve wild places and wild beings while improving the quality and resilience of life. Urbanism is, in my view, the hope for a future that is going to be more populous. And I would recommend Jane Jacobs in her last book, The Eco Economies of Nations. Jane Jacobs is a renowned urban planner. And this was her last work on the subject in which she suggests that cities are actually going to be the best friend of the planet, not the enemy. Urban sustainability will unavoidably force us to deal with inequities of the past. And those inequities have only gotten worse in the intervening years. Whether and how to resolve those disparities that have been left by a deliberate history of urban policy, whether and how to deal with them are political and moral questions as fully as they are questions of engineering. And so in conclusion, I'd like to add one more idea to the pillars supporting sustainability. And this is the importance of forgiveness and the duty to pay forward. Let me explain what I mean. I define forgiveness in this way. Forgiveness is the intentional giving up of one's rightful, legitimate claim for payback. And by payback, I mean compensation in the form of legal compensation or payback in the form of karma. Either way, forgiveness requires people who have an authentic and rightful claim to be mad and to ask for payback to give that up. But that doesn't mean it requires legitimating gains made from illegitimate suffering. 
and so to the extent that we are privileged and our only crime may have been to enjoy the fruit of wrongdoing. I think a moral claim is made that is legitimate when we say the obligations of the privileged and the obligations of wealth are to pay that wealth forward, not to pay it back, to pay it forward. I was listening to a speech that you can find on YouTube by Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren is running for the Senate in Massachusetts. And she made a particularly moving speech where she says, look, if you made money in America, you did it with help. Nobody makes it in America, nobody, who didn't have help. If you made a ton of money getting your product to market, you took it over streets and roads that we built. If you made money, in terms of hiring Americans and you've got good quality labor, largely that labor is publicly educated and we pay for that. And she says to multinational corporations, to American corporations, and to wealthy people, she says, look, the obligation that you have is to pay it forward to the future so that the next kid who comes along and the next business that wants to start gets the same chance that you got and gets the same help pay it forward. So let me close by quoting something that I wrote in this work, Moral Ground. <clears throat> I can hear the voices of my contemporaries rejecting blame. They insist they have not actually done anything evil. They didn't enslave anybody. They didn't kill anyone and they didn't take anyone's way of life. They didn't choose petroleum they didn't choose cars instead of public transportation, and I say to all of us, the only way forward lies in abandoning a time-bound sense of right and wrong. We must make amends for wrongs to the earth and to the people who abide there, for the wrongs that degrade them and us, even if the one terrible wrong that we committed was to enjoy the fruit of wrongdoing. This presentation is brought to you by Arizona State University's Julianne Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability for educational and non-commercial use only.